you listening? Are you watching? You know what it is, not just boxing. From the canvas to the madness, sit down and get yourself locked in. Are you listening? Are you watching? You know what it is, not just boxing. From the canvas to the madness, sit down and get yourself locked in. So how long have you been training with Jordan for? I've been training with Jordan for about a year and a half now, I think. Oh, wow, a long time. Enough. Yeah, a, a while. I mean, I came to him when I first started looking at turning pro uh, about a year and a half ago. And we, everyone in the gym clicked, as you've seen in there. It's, it's a good laugh of everyone. And, and, he, and he knows his stuff as well. So he gets the best out of his fighters. When you look in the gym, the amount of fighters you're around. And not even fighters, I think he does other sports as well. But everyone's doing well and they'll push each other, as you've seen. And, mm -hmm. and it's good, it's good. And what made you sign with Frank? To be honest, I've, my earliest memories of boxing is sitting indoors watching Naz and uh, Ricky Atten on the yeah. telly, and the man behind their career at the beginning was Frank Warren. So it's a no-brainer to, to be signed with him, and it's a privilege. You know the things he's doing with young fighters and how he's taking them to world level and things. I think there's no better man in the job, and I couldn't ask for a better to start my career. Is it surreal having the same promoter as, as your idols going up? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, I believe in anything I do, I'm going to be the best. So. I think that I knew that was going to come one day, but to be starting my career, it obviously, it's, it's a dream can come true. True. So you had an incredible amateur career. When did you start boxing and when did you start getting to that elite stage? So I started about when I was seven year old, I think it was about seven year old. When my dad used to box, we, we went down the local gym that like he knew the men there. We used to go down there, me and my brothers, both, both of my brothers. And it, it never really clicked at first, I'd say, because if I'm doing something, I want to be the best at it. So I'd go down the gym, I couldn't really skip and things. And then I'd go home, practice, practice. And uh, after, like you say, a couple of weeks, everyone was flying, went in the gym and I haven't looked back since. Um, I've enjoyed it. And like you say, Joe, I'm lucky enough to be making a, a living out of it now. Were you always at Repton? Did you start there? No, so I started at St Mary's uh, in Chatham, which is a gym not too far from me mm -hmm. where I'm from. And then moved to Repton with the legendary Bobby Beck and his, and his boy, uh, Robert Jr. And... A lot of other top coaches, you know, and you know, it speaks for himself the amount of champions we was having every year from schools, juniors, youths, internationally. Every year we would, you know, and let's say for example the school boys when we broke the record, there was fighters at every weight. What when was you, the record? What did you break? I, I'm, I can't remember. It was years ago, but I think it was 13 champions in just the first and second year schools. Um, that was my first title I won as a schoolboy, and when you look at a lot of the other fighters now, they're still doing well for himself and. And this, it was a great bunch of lads and this, you know, looking back on it now, it was memories and it was, it was honestly, you couldn't, you couldn't get a gym like it now. Mm -hmm. um, it was second to none. And then from there, I went to Body Shots in, uh, in Crayford, uh, run by Lee Wilkins and a lot of other top trainers in there. Um, who I still go down and train with them now. They still have a part of my career. Um, and then went to Hoddesdon uh, under Sab for the last few fights of my career uh, as an amateur, as a youth. And then, like I say, Went to get on my GB assessments and... Um, How was that? It was, it was different. I, I Listen, it's a, it's a full-time job up there. Um, and it's, it's obviously, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the Olympics, be on GB. Went up there for, I think it was four or five assessments. I had a bad, bad car crash um, on the motorway, going up to see one of my friends in Leeds. And it put me out for a while. I, I couldn't get ready for the seniors. Kept having injuries, um, yeah. so it was a bit of a bad time, and and it and it messed up towards the end of my assessments. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went to my dad and said, "Look, I can't. I want to turn pro. I want to do it properly. Um, I couldn't get going properly as an amateur. If that made sense, mm -hmm. it spurred me on more to box as a pro. Um, so then, yeah, like I say, I've made a transition, and I haven't looked back since. I've got the best team around me possible, from you know manager to promoter to my family supporters, everyone behind me, and." And it's all going well, mate. Yeah, it's all going well. So you won the nationals twice, right? Four times. I won four the schools times. twice. Yeah, I won schools four twice. nationals. Um, four nationals, two European medals. Mm -hmm. um, boxed one other international duels for England against multiple countries. And, you know, it's put me in good stead as a pro to go fight all these international styles. All these other top fighters from their own countries. You know, you face different styles and, you know, whether they're tall, short, strong... How did you find adapting to different styles, especially outside of the UK? I mean, that's, that's the difference between a, a good fighter and a, and a great fighter. You know, if you can get in there and adapt, free phrase as an amateur, if you can get in there and adapt to someone within that time and get in there and look good and beat them, that's the difference, I believe. And I, I know I've got that. So, um, and it's a sprint as well, yeah, really, of course, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. Of course it is. So, 
Yeah, it's, 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 all, it's all good, mate. I'm in a good place. And who was your toughest fight in the amateurs? Toughest fight would be probably one of the ones at the Europeans, uh, probably against Russia as a schoolboy. He uh, was a good kid. He went on to win gold. Um, but, I mean, the, the video's on YouTube, and it's, I believe I want to fight. A lot of people want to fight, but like you say, it's learning. You can't win them all. Um, mm -hmm. But it's fun and things. That's the thing with international boxing, but... Um, yeah, I'd say it's the toughest fight, and then sparring wise as well. Went out to a camp in Russia as well, just a training camp out there of England. And you know the way they do things out in Russia is completely, it's it's all full steam. We went yeah. out there for I think it was a five day training camp with the Olympic team sparring. I think I was a first year youth, so I was. They was obviously grown senior men, and we was a youth, and um, and it was it was tough, never say the less. But it was good sparring, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. There was say thirty of us on the even on the floor sparring each other, mm -hmm. you know, in little rings and things. And the way they do things out there is it's not easy. And you can see why they do as well as they do. Um, but that would be my toughest sparring camp. I'd say was out there with a lot of other top men fighters. And yeah, it was a, it was a good experience. And what's been your favourite moment so far in boxing? Favourite moment would probably be winning my first title. Or or, or my. You know, I don't know, maybe pro debut, getting yourself signed with a big promoter. But I think your first title is the thing that starts it all off. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and the Golden Gloves is what my dad always, and a lot of other people, schoolboys is obviously a massive thing. So when I won that, I knew that it would set me for the future and I, was, I wanted to be a full-time professional boxer then. Mm -hmm. I knew that was going to be my career. <clears throat> I knew that, sorry. I knew that was going to be my living, if that made sense. I knew yeah. I had the talent, I was a special fighter. So I would say that was probably my best moment. Um, or boxing for England, you know, represent your country is a big thing. So there's many. I don't want to keep you know going yeah, on. Yeah, of course. Yeah, few, no, yeah, it's brilliant. Have you ever had? So obviously, people see you now and they're listening. They think, yeah. oh, you know, he's a well-established yeah. amateur. He's doing well under mm. Frank. Has there been hard times where you thought, oh, maybe boxing ain't yeah, for me? Of course. I mean, it's like anything. People only see the good times, but you know, in boxing you have the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. There's been many times where you know, even just in the gym, you have, might have a bad night in the gym or you know, making weight or doing things. There's so many tough things to boxing that people don't know who don't do it or that people don't see. You know, you might take, uh, you might not get a decision, have a learning fight and it don't go your way. You think, is this for me? But, you know, it's getting over them stages of your career that gets you on to the next one. So, of course, there's a lot of low points in boxing, but you just got to make the most of them and put your head down and, and work harder. My name is Dennis Domenes McCann. Professional boxer for Frank Moore and MTK Global. This is fortress boxing. A lot more protection. It's a no-brainer. Around your, around your thumbs, around your knuckles, around my wrist. That's exactly where I have the problems at. They're very compact. So I feel like I'm punching hard with them on as well. And I feel like when you wear, when you got a spar on 14, 16 ounce gloves, the smaller wraps can't really. They're too small for the gloves. That makes sense. So these are a bit bigger and they're getting the gloves a bit more. They're making them more compact. And we're in a world of so much distractions. You know, everyone's got their phones. There's yeah. a party every night somewhere. Mm. Like, how do you find sometimes trying to stay disciplined and not get roped into that? Have you just yeah. had it drilled from young that this is your path and you've never really, you know, I mean, taken that temptation? I've always, even as a young lad, I've always enjoyed having a laugh with the boys, going out. You know, even going to a few parties at a young age and things, but I had to go without that, obviously, due to boxing. I missed that a lot as a youngster, um, you know, like, say, things like that. Um, however, I would, wouldn't regret it. You don't remember going out to a party, but you remember going to win a title. So mm -hmm. it's one of the things you give and you take, but um, if you can get, you know, a median of them both, like, I go out, I've never touched a drug, never touched drink. I can go out, you know, a few nights. Say, if I, I'm not out now till September. So I know that now in the summer, I can enjoy a little bit of time. As long as my weight's still good, I'm still training, everything else is still going well. You know, it's not a problem to have a bit of down time. You've got to enjoy yourself as well. But as long as when it comes to turning on and switching it on, you do that. That's very mature. Obviously, mm. you've got that balance already. Yeah, you need to have the, the equal balance. Yeah. You need it, yeah. So. so how do you usually chill out after a fight? What's the go-to as soon as you finish? After a fight, I would go and sit. Like, on fight night, go see everyone, things like that. Then... The week after, I'll just probably get back in the gym, just take over, nothing crazy. And then, like you say, hopefully get a new fight date as soon as possible. And then it's straight back into camp. So I'm looking to have a busy end of the year. Uh, so I should be out in September. 
then hopefully another one for the end of the year. So like you say, if you're out in December, September, October, November, December, you can't take your foot off the gas because you're obviously boxing again soon. So it's like they say, you, 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 you need to have a little bit of a break because you can't go full steam and blow yourself out. But you've got to know when to switch on. And, and, and yeah, so I'll probably go after this next fight, go and just enjoy himself, maybe a weekend away or something, and then straight back to the gym, enjoy it. Brilliant. And you hear from a lot of people how, with like well-established amateurs, when they mm. go into the pro game, you're pretty much learning from scratch. You know, you go to a new gym, you've yeah. got a new coach, and yeah. you are being taught everything from a completely different mm. view. Of course, yeah. Did you find that quite difficult? Maybe, you know, changing something that was so good for you in yeah. the amateurs to all of a sudden not doing it anymore and drilling yeah. a completely different style. Yeah, like, like I was a very, not bouncy amateur, but in and out, not getting caught a lot. And uh, obviously in the pros, people like to see you sitting on your feet, hurting people with shots and things. It's a completely different style. But that got me to the level I was an amateur, you know, so I wouldn't change it fully, just adapt it a little bit. So I'm never going to change my style completely. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, so I would say, I wouldn't say it's not going to make a much difference to me. Over the years when, when I go, so my next one will be a six rounder. When you step out to that 12 rounds and things, you might have to adapt a lot more. But I wouldn't say it made a lot of difference to me. Um, my dad's always been a main coach of mine and I'm, I'm back training down with Danny Willidge in, uh, in Chatham. So they know me well. They both have me as an amateur. Um, they know what works and what doesn't. So we just adapt things you know, that work to, to the best what it does. Um, and like I say, at the minute it's working well, so I ain't changing nothing. And how did you find as well going from European level and you know boxing yeah. the best, of the best yeah. to fighting a guy that's mm. not really throwing back? So yeah, I thought I said that in interviews after my debut. I said you know it's completely different. You're used to free freeze, fast pace against high level opposition. You know you get in there against someone who's tucking up, just wanting to survive. It's a completely different ball game. Um, but like you say, it's like you say it's completely different, but it's something that I'm gonna have to get used to. So. We're getting there, we're getting there. It's an absolute pleasure to have Gymfluencers on board as a sponsor for season five of the Not Just Boxing podcast. They've been supporting us since we we're on 10,000 followers. If you have over 1,000 followers and you like to showcase your health and fitness journey, or if you're an up and coming boxer who likes making content, you can receive free products in return for just the story. You can also work on paid collabs where you set your own rates. They've worked with the likes of C4, Jimmy's Ice Coffee, and Skinny Food Co, and the list goes on. If you want to hit them up, use the code NJB to get started today. And what do you want to get out of boxing? How do you see the end of your career being? You know, a lot of people say I want to be world champions, I want to be a Hall of Famer. You know, if I'm doing it, I want to do it properly. Um, and, you know, I've got the ability to get to where I need to be. I've got the right team around me. Everyone believes in me, so there's no reason why I shouldn't. The only reason is it's because of myself. So. I'm switched on and I know where I'm going to end up and, and like I say, it's going to be an enjoyable journey. Brilliant. Yeah, it was nice when I heard Sam and Sean, they were like, mm. they don't care about the titles really, they just want to make as much money as possible yeah. and leave with their yeah. health. Well, listen, you can't blame it's, them. It's you, a short you, you, career. That's, it's it, your, your prize fight, isn't it? You get paid for a living, so you've got to have as much, like you say, if you do it right, you look at Fury Usyk, they've just gone out in there, they're doing double well. Um, was it 120 million? Something Fury like made crazy or money. It's crazy money. Um, that's what I'm saying. If you do it right, this job, it can be the best of the best, and you can your grandchildren's kids. It can affect. So, like you say, you, you're a prize fighter at the end of the day. You got to have the right money to fight ratio. So that's that's a big part of it. But I want to be, you know, uh, remembered amongst the greats. That's my goal. And what would you say is your biggest strengths? My biggest strength is is. I've got too many to list off, Ash. I don't want to be, don't want to be too confident <laughs> yeah. and things. But, um, yeah, I mean, listen, if anybody tunes in and watches me box, they can see what my strengths are. Mm -hmm. Nice. And in terms of your relationship with your coaches and everything, and you said your dad, yeah. would you say that's a huge part to your success and what you're doing? Definitely. It's um, not just an individual. A hundred percent. I mean, like you say, you're, you're only as good as a team around you. If you have bad, bad people around you who who are not thinking of your best interests, you're only going to get so far. Like I say, I've got the best team around me possible, so it, it makes a lot of difference. And like I say, they know me dub really well um, from a young age. So, yeah, it's all looking well, mate. Future's looking bright. And have you got any advice to anyone that's listening, maybe aspiring amateurs that are, you know, yeah. maybe at the start of their careers or thinking of taking up boxing? Yeah. What, what would you tell these people? I would just say that if you're going to do it, you've got to do it properly. You can't cut corners. You only get out where you put in. 
Um, there's been a few times, you know, I wouldn't say when I box in, but everyone has, you know, days that they don't feel like doing it. There are the days you've got to do the extra work because, you know, you can't cut corners in this game. You get found out. So if you're doing it, you've got to do it properly. You know, it's, it's not an easy sport. It's not an easy job. So it's dangerous. If you're doing it, you've got to do it properly. And how about finding the right team? You got any advice with, obviously you've been around so many yeah. great fighters and even yeah. here, you know, you've got yeah, a great S&C so many, coach. And... Yeah, 100%. Um, I would say, like you say, you've got to do what's right for you was suited for you. I mean, I've never been in a position, I've always had a dad guide me. Um, but if I had to say to people, I'd say, you've got to go and get some a coach you can click with, who knows you well. Um, you know, on the pads you can riv- get in a rhythm with and everything flows. So I'd say like, if, you, if you're looking to get into it, it's, it's, boxing as a sport is a great thing. I think most people should take it up. You learn a lot of things, respect, you know, um, and it teaches you morals. Um, and like you say, it's, it's such a, you got to be so dedicated to do it. So it keep, teaches you all good life lessons. So I recommend a lot of people to do it. Yeah, it's great. When, when you're around athletes, especially mm. boxers, you're looking at just highly disciplined people. Yeah. And that's what attracts me to the sport so yeah. much. It brings the best out of you. 100%. And everyone's just pushing for them, mm. you know, for themselves. Uh, in terms of nutrition, I'm guessing, are you with the same nutritionist? Oh, yeah, he's, Paul? he knows his stuff. Yeah, yeah, he's very good, very, very good. How long have you been with him for? Since I turned pro. Oh, Since brilliant. I turned pro. I, did, I had a few nutritionists as an amateur, but I didn't really take too much attention to it, to be honest. So I've obviously learned as a pro that you've got to do it properly. Mm. That's another, like you say, low thing that I've learned as an amateur. Um, but Paul, yeah, he's top man. He knows everything. Um, my last two camps have gone perfect. Every way he said, to, I'm going to be on this day. I am um, nutrition wise he gives you all the right foods I'm still because I've always done it wrong as an amateur you know I'd starve myself dehydrate myself thinking oh, I'm not going to make the weight if I eat whereas he's having me eat five meals a day and I'm making weight perfect feeling million dollars so it's crazy how it works isn't it it's, yeah honestly so nutrition's a very big part of it but yeah he does a good job of us all he does a lot of the boys here and as you can see everyone on, on the scales and fight night they look well so he does a good job Season 5 of the Not Just Boxing podcast is proudly sponsored by My Meal Prep. My Meal Prep have made it easy for you to stick to your diet goals as well as eating delicious, tasty, homegrown food. Make sure to use the code NJB20 to get 20% off your first order today. It's just the, the discipline all round mm. in here. Everyone, even out of camp now for most of yeah. boys, everyone's still fairly in shape. Everyone's still turning up for their yeah. sessions. It's, yeah. it's not like people are just going on benders, like no, you know, Ricky no. Hatton going up no, and down, yeah, as great as a fighter he was. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That don't happen anymore, really. No, I mean, like, like you say, you've got to be disciplined. You've got to be in the gym living the life. Because you can only get so far if you don't live the life. And like you say, when you're around other top fighters, like we all are, you sort of, if you are having a a weekend where you're not living the life and they are, it makes you push on and, and want to get back in the gym and train alongside them. So, you know, with Jordan and the boys down here, it's good because we all push each other. So it's good to be in there with them. What's your favourite cheat meal? Favourite cheat meal? There's so many, the list goes on. Um, favourite cheat meal? I don't mind a burger, a chicken burger or something like that, or a nice, I'm not too sure, I'll say cheat meal. Or a cheat day. Cheat day, we'll yeah, have a cheat yeah. day. Um, I like all the wrong things, Ash. I'm a chocoholic, mate. I've been oh, told. Okay. I've been told by my mum I'm a chocoholic. So what chocolate, though? Any. Any. I've been brutally honest. Um, no, I like, I like a bit of like Galaxy and things like that. So Cookie crumble? Yeah, I love cookies as well. Don't get me started on cookies. Yeah. I love some cookies. Um, I'm bad when it comes to chocolate and things. So as soon as I get into camp, I can't, I'm all or nothing. If I'm having it, I'm eating loads. So I just have to cut it out. But that's the worst thing with boxers. They all have sweet teeth, don't they? They all have a sweet tooth. So um, the diet side of it. But... Yeah, I'd say uh, chocolate. I mean, I've been told I'm a chocoholic, so that'd probably be my worst, worst thing of me. I always feel like Dennis McCann with the Haribo. So that always same sticks thing. With it. Yeah, so it's funny. the same thing. Yeah, as, as, as Den. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's it's all the bad things that you shouldn't have. You end up wanting even more because you're not allowed it. But like you say, it's discipline to not have it, isn't it? So. So when you've got your hardest days, when you wake up and you've been mm. brutally trained, you're at the end yeah. of camp, or whatever. What keeps you going? What's that motivation like? I just think that, you know, myself when I was younger I would have dreamed to be where I am now. So you've got to push on and make sure the rest of your career is as you dream and how you want it to be. Like you say, you stand to yourself. So if you have a few bad days and you're not living the life, it'll pay off. You can't cut corners. So I just got to think the end goal, what I want, and I know it will happen. So just got to stay focused and, and wait for it to happen. What advice would you tell your younger self? Younger self, I'd tell myself that 
exactly the things I've said to you already about, you know, staying switched on and going without things that like I said about going without party life and without things that it's not worth it's, it's all worth it if that makes sense because as I said you don't remember all that you remember like where I am now and what I'm doing now so I say just keep your feet on the ground and, and keep yourself working hard and it will all pay off and do you still get doubts even at this level do you ever get doubts creeping your head and you gotta gotta fight I them mean off I or? wouldn't say doubts I think everyone has like I say they have things in their head where things come up but you just gotta know like I'm confident in myself I know my ability and I, and I believe in myself as do everyone around me. So I wouldn't say doubts as much, but you always have thoughts. Mm -hmm. As a fighter, you always do. Or if you, like I say, if you have a day that's not everything's going right, you might have a thought about it. But then it's being able to switch on when you need to and, and know that no, I'm doing this properly. So Are you good at flicking that switch, you know, just before the fight you, when you go from right from, now yeah, a bit of yeah, a smile? Def no, definitely. Um, I mean, you've got to. It's called professional for a boxing. Professional boxing for a for a reason, you know, professional is in, you've got to be a professional outside the gym as well as in the gym. So, yeah, I'll, I'll switch it on when I have to, definitely. Brilliant. Well, it's been a pleasure having you on. I shall appreciate it, mate. Thank you for having me on. And uh, we'll try and get a bit of footage as well. Yeah, lovely, training lovely, lovely. Lovely, lovely. Pleasure, mate. Nice one. All the best.